Good day fellow investors, I hope you feel great today and welcome to the weekly stock market news with a fundamental twist. Today we'll be discussing the Fed's stress financial index, Leonardo da Vinci and inflation, the next big short, just shortly touch on that, we'll discuss the recent news about China slowing down and the terrible impact it had on commodities and other related items, ooh, China is slowing down, we'll take a short look at gold, and then to finish we'll discuss about insider trading and why Kimball Musk is absolutely crazy, I don't know what is he doing. So let's immediately start with the Fed's financial stress index. The Fed measures 18 weekly data series, like credit liquidity for banks or interest rate spreads, and then gives out an index that shows how difficult it is to get financing and how stressed is the general financial environment. And I'm sure you won't be surprised by the fact that financial stress is at historically low levels. Now, for financial stress, it is good when it's balanced. It's not good when things are too easy and it's not good when things are too difficult. Now, things are too easy for companies and that's not good because inefficient companies manage to survive, create a lot of unhealthy competition and disable the economic environment to work in a healthy way. Plus, a lot of companies, due to the low interest rates, engage in risky projects, thus make the whole system more risky in the long term. For example, if we look at the US net debt to cash flow ratios and the high yield bond yields, thus the junk bond yields of corporations that would probably go bust if the financial environment changes, we can see a huge divergence between the corporate net debt to cash flow and the interest rates. The interest rates are continuing their decline while the corporate net debt to cash flows is increasing, which means that corporations are taking more and more debt, but the cash flow isn't improving. On the negative side, when and if interest rates rise, that corporate net debt to cash flow will rise even higher because of higher interest costs and the situation will get very, very difficult. So the Fed knows that, and that's why they have been very, very slow in raising interest rates, even if we are already eight years in a period of economic expansion. The story behind the Fed is that there is no inflation, that's why we don't have to raise interest rates. However, I think there is inflation, and there is a lot of inflation, and money is becoming worthless. If we look at the stock market, it has exploded over the last eight years, but there is something even more telling. This painting from Leonardo da Vinci was recently sold for $450 million. I would never put something like this on my wall, but somebody was willing to pay $450 million for this. So there is clearly a diverging world. Paintings, stocks, home prices, fixed assets, rich people's assets, increase in price, making the rich richer. While if we look at the Bloomberg Agricultural Index, we can see it's sharply declining over the last five years. So inefficient companies, low interest rates, subsidies in the European Union make an unhealthy environment with low inflation for food prices alongside low energy. However, both those sectors, energy or food, are cyclical. So we have to expect a reversal in those sectors somewhere in the future. It can also happen in the next 10 years, but the impact will be huge on global central banks, their interest rates and the sustainability of the current financial systems. So we really have to think about how are we positioned in relation to what will happen in the next 10 years. Or if you're positioned in the short term, but then you have to know, okay, I am positioned for short-term trading. However, very few investors are positioned in the short term with their whole portfolio. Everybody has some long-term plays and some short-term plays. We'll discuss more about that later in the gold sector. And now, the first commercial break of this YouTube channel. We have a sponsor of this video, well, practically of the whole channel since it began, but nobody knew about it. My wife has just published her new cookbook. So, if you are into healthy eating, healthy living, if you're a long-term investor and want to reach 100 with a healthy body, then you really should dig into my wife's cookbook 
and see how to prepare healthy lunches when you go to work, when you go to school. If you have children that go to school, it's better to give them a healthy lunch than an unhealthy one. In addition, she has a website. She is a health guide. So feel free to dig into it if you are interested. Both the links also for the book and for the health coaching are in the description below. So even if you're not interested, you can also check her website and see who is behind me and who is taking care of me. So that's it for commercial breaks. Let's go back to business. Now the situation in Europe is even worse than what the financial stress index in the US shows. If we just take a look at the Italian government budget deficit over the last 20 years, we can see that, that it has been negative in every year and the government's debt to GDP ratio is 120%. However, nobody is scared about that. The Italian two-year treasuries are less risky than US three-month treasury bills because Italy, of course, has a negative yield. And this again shows how it's very difficult for anybody to raise interest rates. The only catch can be inflation. Because if Italy would have to pay a healthy interest rate of 4 or 5%, it would default on its debt because it would put too much pressure on the economy, on the Italian people. Especially since they didn't qualify for the World Cup, but don't tell them. However, maybe I am wrong because maybe the Italians will want to work even more, especially the older ones, as by 2030, 28.5% of Italy will be above 65 perhaps they will be wiser and they will repay the debt later. So it's a very, very interesting situation, definitely unsustainable. So we must understand that the current financial markets are unsustainable. Sooner or later, it will break. Where and when, I don't know yet. Last week's news started with the China slowdown scare. However, let's see what it is all about. Chinese industrial production rose 6.2% instead of the forecasted 6.3%. It declined in relation to September. Retail sales also declined. However, I think every developed country would sign immediately for such growth rates. And the funny thing is that the government is really putting brakes where it sees that it is getting too hot. Like debt, what kind of debt, what kind of lending is allowed and of course, real estate. So China, yes, it did slow down, but as long as China, and that's the fundamental news that I want to give, as long as China grows, it will have a positive in impact on demand for raw materials, for oil, for everything that China is consuming during its growth path. And so as long as it grows, we are fine. If it is 6%, 5%, 7%, doesn't really matter so much in the long term. It matters a lot in the short term because there are a lot of traders, a lot of speculators they, that play on that. But in the long term investment run, it doesn't matter that much. What is also important is that other Asian countries are booming. Indonesia, which has a population of 260 million, is growing at 5% per year. Bangladesh, with 160 million, is growing at 7%. Put just those two countries together and you have 420 million people. So that's something very, very important to look at. Of course, those countries are starting from a low level, but when they grow and they are on a good trajectory to grow, it will really change the world and how demand and supply forces in the world work now in the next 20 years. So get ready for a lot of change and, and be prepared with your portfolio towards that change. Let's see what's going on with gold. Just a few weeks ago, the headlines were like this. Very, very negative on gold. Lower demand, lower whatever. Gold prices were declining a bit and everybody was ne negative. However, in the last few days, everybody suddenly turned positive because there were some issues with, with the US tax bill. I'm mentioning this not because I care much about the short term, but I like to see the volatility in the short term. So some issues in the US tax bill made gold prices spike immediately. Now, think what can happen to gold prices or what will happen to gold prices when we see actual turmoil, when we see Italy getting into trouble, when we see all the high yield debt getting into trouble. Imagine then what will happen to gold because small changes or things that are not even important impact gold and investor sentiment towards gold. In the long term, 
when something really happens, something really important happens, it will change everything. And be ready for huge changes in gold and all the other assets that you know. So be really prepared for an extreme scenario. All right, insider trading. I always like to look at what are insiders doing? Are they buying or are they selling? If insiders buy stocks and they do it constantly and do, do it with significant amounts in relation to what they make, in relation to how rich they are, then you know they have faith in the company. If they are selling constantly and selling a lot, like, I don't know, the Snapchat owner sold at the IPO, he sold a lot of stocks, then you know, okay, they are not so convinced about their company. If you're convinced about your company, you don't sell a share. Warren Buffett didn't sell Berkshire Hathaway. Bill Gates didn't sell Microsoft to buy a villa or a Lamborghini or something like that. So to stay on the insider trading, I think Kimball Musk, Elon's brother, is crazy because, I don't know, the last news I have about Tesla is from last year and the company was supposed to produce 10,000 Model 3 cars per week by now. So I've, I'm sure they are managing it and the logical step is to start producing a Roadster, 200,000 car. I'm definitely going to buy that one as soon as it is made because they are also going to make trucks, electric trucks. And from what I have heard with the trucks, you're going to need a nuclear reactor to charge that truck. So I'm going to invest in uranium because uranium is going to spike and uranium stocks are going to spike because all of the trucks Tesla is going to make. So I'm going to make a lot of money there and then I'm going to use that money to buy me, I think, two Tesla Roadsters. I think it's a perfect car. They are making a lot of money with the Model 3. They will probably make a lot of money with the other models. So Tesla will be a great investment in the long term. Now, what I don't get, or perhaps Kimball Musk doesn't get, or he doesn't know finances, because he's constantly selling Tesla stock. And everybody in Tesla is constantly selling Tesla stock. Are they stupid? Can't they see how good of a stock it is and how big of a promise? What can happen? How much money are they losing by selling now? If we look at the insider trades, we can see that Kimball Musk is selling every month, is selling 2,190 shares. That's 1.5% of what he owns. But slowly, slowly, he is selling his whole position until he gets new shares from option agreements. If you go to the bottom, Jarvetson, Steven, or however do I pronounce that, executed 44,777 options at a price of 250 and immediately sold those at a price of 340. So he doesn't keep that stock, he immediately sold. Then Musk Kimball selling, selling, everybody else that acquires the options, they acquired the stock for zero. And then immediately, as they can, they sell those stocks. Phil John Douglas bought for zero, sold for 350. Bernarderis Eric bought from 181, sold for 340. So everybody in Tesla in the last few months has been selling stocks. Either they are crazy and they don't understand what Tesla is and how good of a company it is, or we have to tell the truth here, they know how good the company is Tesla. They know the probability there is for Tesla to succeed and they prefer to take the money now and diversify, diversify from Tesla. So really look at what insiders are doing. They tell you a lot about not what will happen. Tesla might succeed, but they tell you about the risk and the reward. And Kimball Musk is telling you the risk with Tesla at this price is huge while the chances for reward are very, very small. And that's what works in the long term. In the short term, anything can happen. And I wish Tesla all the best. And I wish Tesla to succeed because they are really disrupting the world. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video.